Yo, what is good, world? It's your boy, Calvin Leroy King, the third. And as always, I have my lovely co hosts with the most of on my side, Ms. Reese PC, the one and only. Hey, y'all. We thank y'all for tuning in and turning up for another exclusive segment of This, That, and the Third, the lifestyle show that gives you life. Literally. Literally. Now, joining us on today's exclusive segment of This, and the Third is none other than Fifth Ward Alder Woman, Miss Leslie Hairston. And we please slow clap this beautiful queen. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, first and foremost, and welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, the pleasure is all ours. Yeah. Now, we're going to jump straight into Let's it, go. if you don't mind. Let's go. <laughs> so, um, a lot of people out there may, may or may not know that you are currently in a runoff for your award. Yes, I am. Right? Yeah. Yes, I am. Well, because I didn't know, because I reported it last week. I was like, she won. She won. <laughs> She's a fortune teller. <laughs> She's a fortune teller, so she, she already was. knows what's going but to happen. But we saw that people. you were running, two other people were running against yeah. you mm -hmm. in your award. Yes. Um, so we're clear, you have to get 51% in the original. 50 plus 50 one. 50 plus one, oh, okay. right. right. And if you don't get that, then you get the runoff. And right. the runoff is just the two highest percentages going head to head. Yep. All, all holds bar, okay. you know what I'm saying, winner take off. So you are, since 1999, been holding down yes. the fifth war. So yes. that's about 19, going on 20 yeah. years. Yes. Tell yeah. us how that experience has been, like 20 years. It's, all you know, it's amazing to, to walk around the neighborhood or mm -hmm. go around the neighborhood and see things that were there that were not there. Exactly. Back in 1999. Growth and development. Uh, Stony Island had no medians. There was no grass. There was no greenery. Right. Uh, there was no access to the lakefront. Right. There were th not those beautiful underpass that I put in right. and I had to fight oh, to yeah. get those in. Now the one projects. 63rd Street uh -huh. wasn't there? No, it was a bridge. Mm. Okay, 57th the point? Mm. It was a bridge. Wow. Mm. You know, and I, it was. It was a white bridge. Mm. It was a white bridge. Because I remember <laughs> crossing <laughs> it. Yeah. And here's the thing about that. The city was going to just give us another bridge. Right. Oh. And I said, oh, no. no we're, we're not doing that. that. No. I want what they have on the north side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so mm. that's what you see there today. Oh, yeah. I remember that bridge. Uh, but, you, but you see, like, the now of it, and you <laughs> oftentimes forget where You do came forget. From. Yeah. Where we <laughs> we do. I mean, yeah. That's, I mean, I, what, what I got to do mm -hmm. is remind people oh, yeah. where we came from mm -hmm. and, and how we got there oh, and yeah. who brought them there. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I, I like doing the work, but I don't always toot my own horn like right. I yeah. should. Right. Now, that's something that's a little bit newer is that, uh, you know, the new age, we know how to brand, self brand right. ourselves yeah. and get ourselves out there and every, we're in the selfie error right so we really know how to brand ourselves well right yes and, and back in the day it seemed like man my work speaks, speaks for itself for, yeah. right yeah what other changes have you seen over your tenure that are just very dynamic in the way that politics are done and just in terms of lifestyles in general well i think you have to look at some of the things some of the new buildings that we have i think the the greatest one is is greater grand crossing okay um, you know, when, when I came there, I actually did some pro bono legal work for a building okay. that had a slumlord oh, wow. and, you know, dealing with the issues that the people were having. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was going door to door. I was still campaigning. And, yep. Not still not Hello. doors. <laughs> and, you know, just talking to the people. And then I met Gary Comer. But by that time, I had already organized the block clubs right. on right. there. Mm, okay. And so when we were asking people, what's it going to take to improve your community? Because everybody says we want to improve it, but nobody wants to either do the work mm -hmm. or either nobody knows how. Exactly. Yeah. And so it was it was one of the best learning experiences ever. Oh, yeah. And we were just very fortunate that we had a billionaire mm -hmm. that came from the hood. Right. 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 And wanted to come back and didn't want to put a statute of himself right. or just right. throw some money in somewhere. Right. Something a little he more actually useful. wanted to understand. And so what we ended up doing is we talked to everybody, said, you know, give us your bucket list of everything you think that you need. Mm -hmm. And we started ticking that stuff off. Right. And so what you see now is you've got a youth center because everybody says mm -hmm. kids need something to do. So yeah. we got the Gary Comer Youth Center, oh, yeah. which is home. To my favorite State group, the, the South Art. Shore Drill Team, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> making sure that they have the equipment that they need and they have the uniforms mm -hmm. and the support right. that they need in mm -hmm. order to continue their programming. Yeah. So then we looked at the elementary school and we figured out when the kids graduated eighth grade, they went to 75 different high schools. Mm -hmm. wow. That is not a way to embrace your community, no. right? right? So we figured, well, let's find a high school. And so then... He built Gary Comer College Prep. Oh, yeah. And then at, after learning, we figured out that we got to bring the parents in, and the parents are in and involved now. 
we had to deal with housing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and affordable housing. How do we attract young families? Yes, right. Indeed. Yes, right. indeed. So we built some affordable housing, right? And so now you see it as a thriving neighborhood with the organizations. Some of them that have been there for a while, but some new ones. There are a lot of different youth programs that are going on yes, there, there are. and it 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 is it is it is a testament yep. to what happens when you know we all put in. And everybody goes in. Now, I definitely agree. I always say that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And it seems like not only the Greater Grand Crossing, but just the ward in general has gone far in the past 20 years. Um, and that's kind of on the political side, but you mentioned <coughs> earlier in terms of practicing law. Mm -hmm. So you're a, a professional attorney as well. Tell us about that journey. So I am a former assistant attorney general. Okay. I am a former state's attorney's appellate prosecutor. Okay. Um, I worked with Jim Montgomery, his law firm, doing criminal defense. Okay. Um, so I've done, and I also worked a bit with uh, my now colleague, Alderman Roderick Sawyer. Okay. okay. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, 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 it's been well-rounded. It's been well rounded. Mm -hmm. um, it has always been people-driven. Right. And um, I'm really proud of that. Oh, yeah. I'm really Definitely. proud of that. Definitely. I think it allows me to look at things differently than some people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you get being an appellate lawyer, you only have a certain amount of time. If you are before the appellate court or the Supreme Court, you only have a certain amount of time to make your case. case. I don't yeah. care whether the trial was 10 years, mm -hmm. two days, or 10 minutes. Right. You got the same amount of time to get your point across. Right. Mm -hmm. So what the skill set that I, did, did, that I got was to be able to digest large amounts of information mm -hmm. in a short period of time and then break it down. Oh, yeah. So when somebody gives you a document this big, right. I can read through it real quick right. and then give you the top five points. Right. Mm. Make it so that means you don't fall for the okie doke, right? Right. Yeah. Right. right? Because there's always some stuff, mm -hmm. some hidden stuff, right. some right. You know, fine print. We're going to get caught up in it. Or, the, or the index right. in this case, because <laughs> that's exactly what it was with the parking meter deal. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, how come index, you know, X is missing? Yeah, yeah. And so, nah. well, we, we don't know. Yeah. Well, then guess what? You don't get the vote. Right. Man, mm. knowledge is definitely power, man. So, with you being in your alderman position for so long, mm -hmm. what are some of the misconceptions of being an alderman? So, is that we do nothing. <laughs> um, that, it, that it is an easy job. Mm -hmm. um, that all you have to do is go to council or go to a committee meeting. It's so much more than that. Right. If you do it the right way. Mm. Um, it is meeting with block clubs. It is talking with people. It is dealing with trees. It is dealing with the streets. It is dealing with our favorite in Chicago, potholes. Mm. Yeah. It, it is dealing with zoning matters. Yeah. It is dealing with businesses, good businesses and bad, bad businesses, business. yeah. good landlords and bad landlords. Mm -hmm. It is dealing with your schools. It is dealing with the park district. It is dealing with, in my case, I have a, a major university in the ward, oh, yeah. the University of Chicago. It, and, and, it, and it's also like pushing the USC to do better with the trauma center. Oh, yeah. And it took 10 years for them to get there, but they mm -hmm. got there. You have to be persistent, yeah. consistent, and, you know, they're going to tell you no. Right. And, and you're going to say, okay, well, I'm going to try this. You've got to be able to be creative and make it happen right. yeah. somehow. And right. I've been able to do that even though the administration worked against me a lot right. of the time. Yeah, I mean, you have mm. to, like you said, persistent, consistent, relentless, I would say. Yeah, you know, and yeah. Sometimes you just can't take no for an answer, right? So when you say the university is in your ward, like mm. explain the the parameters around your ward, because that's, yeah, I think we that's a have lot. A snapshot of yeah, it, we'll, we'll, we'll put up people, a snapshot. It's, it's, it's jagged. Yeah, it's that's jagged. Because well, I didn't and, know that. I'm like, and hmm. that's interesting because next year we're going to start taking the census again. Okay. And that's going to be important because... You need to know uh, what the, we're going to have new ward boundaries. Mm -hmm. okay. We know that the black population is down. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do we lose a black ward? Um, you know, what does that look like and what do our wards look like? And the history behind that is in voting power. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. You don't want to dilute our voting power. Exactly. That's true. And true. so that is, you know, that you, you got to go through that in order to do it. But the, the northernmost boundary on the west side is at 51st and Cottage Grove. Wow. On the east side is 49th and South Shore Drive, okay. right by the Ramada. Right, okay. Right, right by yeah. the Ramada. Right That's up. The southernmost is uh, 79th and Stony Island, where the White Castle, Castle is, is. Oh, yeah. on, on the west side of the street. Car show. And right, <laughs> and, and right where we are up is the South Shore Cultural Center. Okay. 
Wow, that's yeah, so it's because very, it's not I like thought I sat shape in um, Michelle Harris's ward. Mm -hmm. So it's just weird how it just yeah. loops and goes around. Oh, yeah. And it changes uh, ever so often as well. Yeah. Well, it yeah. changes every, every 10 years every 10 because years, every right. 10 years, the United States, the government has to do a count census. of how many people are here. Yeah. Right? Mm. Yeah. And that's why they do the census. Mm. And, it, and, it, and it's tied to money and oh, tied, tied to, to resources lot of and a lot of different things. So you need to have a good accounting in, in, in order to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, and so that's what that is. So that I hope when people, when it comes up again, mm -hmm. now with the uh, boundaries, they get weird that way because you count the population in the city of Chicago. We have 50 wards. You divide it by 50. Mm -hmm. That tells you how much each person should have in their ward. Right, mm -hmm. right now it's 55,000 plus or minus some. Right. So, okay. And so then you count block by block thank god for technology because right. before you didn't have it right right you can you can now pull it up on a map yeah. and you're like there's the jones family there's yeah. the swanson you see him in the window you're waiting right right back. yeah <laughs> so you can you know it's made it a lot easier, easier but then you go block by block right. until you hit that number hmm. now if it's some place where there is no population say like jackson park mm -hmm. okay then you can either go around it or you keep it and you go to Over the it. next yeah, part okay. where there is population right. and it has to be contiguous right okay. so that's how you get sometimes uh, the yeah. movements mm -hmm. so that's knowledge is power yeah. right because we never knew how they determined what those yeah. lines look like and just in general i'm reading up and it's saying that you know the reverse migration a lot of people are leaving the city and at an alarming rate african-americans are leaving the city um has that impacted the ward and like what are some maybe um, things that are coming to make those that are stay are here want to stay and those that uh, might be considering relocating relocating to the war well I mean that's the goal to get people to relocate back here yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, again it's a generational thing so my generation and the ones right underneath me we were told go get your education and then fly yeah. right yeah. you know so we moved to New York we moved to California yeah. we moved to Atlanta and raised our families we didn't come back home to raise our families yeah. Yeah, and true. so that's why that's part of the reason why you have in the 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 black communities that used to be very stable not having the same population that it did before you look at Chatham you mm. look at South Shore um, the other thing is that we don't have as many black businesses as we did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my father was an entrepreneur. There were we had we had black gas stations, black cleaners. Yeah. We had an abundance of black mm -hmm. restaurants. Um, you know, which we don't have. Again, we went and got educated and didn't come back and run the family business. business right, right? right. So you you got to do things. Improving the schools is is is, is key. Mm -hmm. um, having quality housing stock is True. key. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to start doing the amenities right. mm -hmm. that, that are part of any neighborhood. You know, at the end of the day, people just want economic justice, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's what we want. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I always say I would like South Shore, 71st Street, 75th Street, you yes. know, to look like it do on Halston and Belmont, to, mm -hmm. like to be always we thriving. At, at home. We want to kick yeah. it at home. We don't yeah. necessarily want to have to travel to kick it. And uh, I think we're headed in that direction. We are headed in that but direction. Let me just done. tell you a little right. bit. It took 30 years right. for Wicker Park and all of that to get like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. A process. You know, people it's a process. look at 53rd Street at Hyde Park. Actually, Tony Perkwinkle and I started that 20 years ago. Oh, the, wow. You know, and it's just now coming into fruition. But, you know, you and, and it does take time. Right. And I know that's hard to, to hear when yeah. everything is you like right at your well, everything is right at your fingertips yeah. yeah and you know then there's still a little discrimination going around though yeah. I mean you know you, you got to keep it real yeah yeah, yeah. Not it is. And I think when I was growing up I grew up on 61st and Ingleside mm -hmm. and so 61st Street was booming right now you walk down 61st it's like yeah. where'd they go it's like zombie yeah. land <laughs> so like I just some, some of the changes I've seen have been good, and some I'm like, okay, well, what's next? What's coming? Right. And I guess that leads me to my next question, which is, you know, you, you've put in so much time, energy, and effort. Mm -hmm. Why are you running for re-election now? Like, obviously, the work is never done. There's more work to do. Why are you still so committed to because I started this, mm. and I, you know, there, there your baby, this. right? This, 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 yeah, this is my bad. I started, and I'm going to finish this. Let through. me just, you know, people assume that Starbucks has been there. It's been there forever. No, it hasn't. And right? I, no, it hasn't. no, I know hasn't. that. <laughs> and and the city fought me in getting it. They told me they said, "Well, Starbucks, aren't your goals a little lofty?" I said, "Well, don't people 
Drink don't coffee? Black, don't black people drink coffee? Right. And it yeah, stayed busy. I drink, and it is Frappuccino? still one of the top grossing Starbucks. Mm. You know, but I didn't do it because of the city. I did it in spite of the city. Mm -hmm. And every but time they mm. put a roadblock, I knocked it out the way. Mm. Right. You know, and again, you go back to those personal relationships. I had a friend that knew Magic Johnson. He was doing the thing in, in New York where he was doing the movie theater, movie theater. And, the, and the Starbucks gave him a call. He came. And that's what you have there. So it oh, takes man. it takes somebody, takes not relationships. just the relationships, but you got to be creative when they oh, tell yeah. you no. You got to find another way to do it. Mm -hmm. Get a way, to, get awesome. a way to find a way to get them to say yes. So now, who are you running off against? Is it? Uh, what is a runoff? Is it uh, <laughs> Callaway, John. William Callaway? Yes, Callaway. yes, yes. Okay, now he's he's an activist, a Strong young upcoming activist. Him. Don't want to take anything away from him. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you'll hear me say that it's oh, time yes. for the elders to oh, sit yes. out, right? <laughs> right. But when I say that, I mean folks like Danny Davis, <laughs> Bobby Rush. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest, right? I think th some things uh, transcend the, the, the testament of time, the, t the trends of time. And it's one of those things where if your work is continuing to produce, and then let's stay. keep producing. And if right? it's stagnating, then let's then consider let's, other options. Well, yeah. but also, you got to bring somebody else <laughs> in. Up. You got to bring somebody else And that's else what up. I feel Unreal. like a lot of these elders don't do because they want to hold on yeah. to it right. all mm -hmm. until they die. And I just feel like that's a little unfair. Right. Like, I know you train up somebody right. to to take over, not just give up the seat, but to pass it on. Would, would, would Will be somebody that you would be willing to work with? I mean, let's say you win the runoff and he's like, ah, oh, well, I'm still strong and positive and uh, good for the You community. know what? I, Will, yeah. we, need, we need the Will Callaway yeah. the Will out there. Callaway, you know, right. I've, I've done my fair share of protests. Now it's your time. I do the legislative stuff. I right. do the development. Right. I do, you know, this is what I do. I do the community thing. Right. And, you and, the and specialist specialize. That's, you you got to let this, there is room for everybody. Right. There is room for everybody. That's true. It is. And that's, and we talked about with all the candidates that ran for mayor, some oh. of those popular ones that Willie Wilson, Amara, and you, um, I would say LaShawn Ford, but he only hey, got 1%. Really <laughs> but, I don't know if he's that popular yet. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Keep, keep but people like that run for aldermen. There are other positions and things you can do to help build you well, up. You don't always have to start at the top. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. You know, like, you there need are other to positions. learn a few things yeah. and know something. Um, you know, I didn't just get here. I've been here. Right. Right. I've been here for 45 years. I know. I've been here when it was a food desert, when it's not a food desert, right. when it's a food yeah. desert again, yeah. when it's not right. a food desert again. Right. you got to know some things. you got to do your homework. you got to be willing to work hard. Right. It's not just about throw everybody. Everybody wants crime to go down. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> the, 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 you're never going to see a campaign with that. Everybody wants an improved education, mm -hmm. right? Wow. You, right. You, you know that. We all want affordable housing. Yes, yeah. The yeah. issues are going to be the same. The question is... Who is qualified and talented enough to get, to it, get done. it done? Excuse yeah. Me. Right? Excuse me. Yeah. Speaking, well, you mentioned food deserts, she's right? She's talented enough. Right. I already know we just recently in the wars uh, inked the deal that the uh, uh, Jeffrey Plaza will yeah. now be reemerging and things like that. Talk about that and some other projects that you kind of have your okay. uh, hands involved with. Um, that, you know, that was interesting. Dominus closed all of their stores. Mm -hmm. uh, I and, that. Right? And everybody said, oh, well, you know, but... What about South Shore? They, right. You closed the store. I didn't close the store. That was right. a corporate decision. decision right. yeah. That you have no control over yeah. that. Right. Um, but it was challenging trying to get find another grocer. Number one, it was owned by an absentee landlord, a landlord that lives in California. Mm. Yeah, so they, uh, you remember the market crashed in 2008? We mm -hmm. do. So <laughs> homes went underwater. So did that, so did that shopping center. Yeah. Right. And what he wanted to charge grocery stores to come in there was the original amount and not the recession amount. Right, the market mm. price right? at this point. Right. Plus, he was still getting rent from Dominic's for a year after they closed. Oh, yeah. Right? So that gives you two Man. years, right? there right yeah and then you there there were some other grocers that came to the store to the to the table but at the end of the day it did the deal fell through they couldn't get the yeah. financing they couldn't get whatever it was right. um, again personal relationships mm -hmm. I was talking with the friend you know I said I'm you know I'm I talked to Bob Mariano I talked to everybody and I said they said to me I have I, I know somebody mm -hmm. give them a call and I worked that relationship, and we closed on it last month. Right. And so now we're getting, we're oh, using yeah. all of the 62,000 square feet Come of on, that man. site. They acquired the whole shopping center, not on, just man. the grocery right. store. 
so that we have a say so as to what goes into those stores. Right. That's awesome. Right? Well, what what stores, what businesses come in there. Right. And it is gonna be like other grocery stores. We're gonna have a fireplace, we're gonna come have on, indoor man. and outdoor seating. Right? We're gonna have a we're wine bar, we're gonna, gonna, gonna have the halal bar. meats. Yes. We you know, we're gonna have everything, a full service grocery store. I think that is slow clip worthy. Yeah, Can we is. please <laughs> welcome back grocery store? Well, we don't wanna have to be in the neighborhood to eat. Man. And wait, and can I say I I don't go to Jewels on seventy nah, fifth. Nah. We have so, preferences here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to venture out of the. How about this? I live two blocks from here. Right. I live two blocks yeah. from the Dominic. So you really. And the sad the thing is the corporate mindset. That's and that's when I talk about changing a corporate mindset. Yeah. Because you would think that black people don't have the need to eat. The, the way, way the operate. grocery industry is, is right? Yeah. If you look on the south and west sides in the city of Chicago that all have challenges getting economic development, you would think that we don't have those needs. Yeah. Right. That we're it, not cooking. Right. That Clearly. we don't eat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Make Clearly. us a priority. We're a priority. Yeah. We're some of the, what was it, a $1.1 trillion, trillion dollars of buying well, and power? And we cook. We want to eat. We, we, love, we don't want bye bye's. Right. We, we were talking about how well, you know, here's, here, here, here's, here's another fun fact. <laughs> right. Um, you know, in Naperville, there is a grocery store for every, I think it's either 11,000 or 13,000 yeah. people. I can believe it. On the south side, it's one for every 130,000 people. Oh, side. I can believe that. Because in Oak Park, yeah. there was a grocery store like, on each side, wherever you went. Man, right? Maxis yeah. is the same the, way. Like, convinced. they have everything. <laughs> like, you might drive five, ten minutes to get to it, but then they're all right mm. there. Like, yo, come on. Yeah, but oh, Maxis is know, having his struggles now. Yeah. Well, Do you know I <laughs> went to, uh, to grab a birthday gift real quick, right? Mm. Pull up at Target. I'm like, ah, oh, Target's gone. Oh, 87? Yeah. yeah. The bleeding. <laughs> It's like, yo, like they're selling the shelves. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. But I will say this. Uh, <coughs> the runoff is coming. Chicago, stay woke, go vote. You know, April we 2nd. always say that. April 2nd is the day. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like there was some extremely low turnout. For it was. The there was. There and, was. You know, uh, the election. Hopefully that won't be the case. Because I actually heard, and I'm not going to call people ignorant, but I heard some people saying, I'm just going to wait for the runoff with the mayor. They knew it was going to be a runoff. So they were like, I'll vote in the runoff, but I won't vote before the runoff and i was just kind yeah, of like, right, i think anytime you have the opportunity to vote rock the vote and uh april 2nd is the opportunity that you will have a chance to vote is that the same day that you vote for a mayor and yes, your runoff is yes, the same day okay. yes so one day easy to remember and make sure y'all go rock the vote now is there early voting for yes runoffs? there will be early voting. okay, okay. i just so take advantage yeah, of that like miss reese you know yeah. she don't wait in no line no <laughs> lines no waiting well you know it was so sad because i did work the polls right and only 240 people came to my mm -hmm. precinct so it was like ridiculously low. So my question is, for, pe for people that may miss the show for whatever reason, shame on you, uh, <laughs> but want more information on where you stand on certain policies and issues, how can people get in contact with you, find out more about, you know what I'm saying, they, you? They, they can call my office, 773-324-5555. Oh, we'll put me. it out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can, you, can, you can put that up. Uh, LeslieAHairston.com. Come on, man. The um, website's easy. The website's easy. <laughs> we, you know, we, we are a full service office. Right. You know, we field hundreds of calls a day. Right. Uh, this is what we do. Right. This is what we do. Very true. Yeah. Very true. All right. That's so y'all heard it here first on this and the third. Now, before we get out of here, <laughs> we have a special treat for the older woman. Uh-oh. We play a game on this and the third called This, That, and the Third. And the game is very simple. We're going to ask you three questions, and you just have to answer honestly and from the heart. Okay. You ready to play? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so this is this. Give me one of your, you said you're, you're, you're from the South Shore community, you grew up in the ward, and now you call the shots for the ward. What was one of your favorite childhood memories growing up in the area? All right, so it was a birthday party that I had. <laughs> she was ready for it. Right, right, right. 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 It was a birthday party that I had at the beach. Okay. And I uh, had, I guess, a bunch of little girls, and we were at the beach, and we got McDonald's. We had Big Macs and French fries. <laughs> big treat. And, and that, yeah. was, that was a big thing. Yes. So yes, that. He <laughs> said, it wasn't no dollar menu. Birthday at the beach. Birthday at the beach. Birthday big at Mac. the beach. Okay. This is that. Working so hard as an alderman, um, when you retire, when you're ready to settle mm -hmm. down, what is one thing on your bucket list? Let's see. What is on my bucket list? Mm. Wow. Um, probably to travel. Mm -hmm. To travel. What's one to place? To all the beaches. <laughs> all all the beaches that the I beach. can. Oh, I, 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 the beaches. Yes. That's, that's good. Well, that's that hard it. here. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, this is the third. 20 year, going on 20 years in, what advice would you give to that first term all the mm. woman that you were in 99, 2000? What advice would you give the former you? Wow. I, I would tell her to continue to, mm, let me think about that again. I got yeah, right, 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 I'm thinking, what would I tell her? That, okay, I know what it is, mm -hmm. um, that everybody's not going to like you. Mm. Very that true. you're not going to please everybody. Come on now. And understand that, and that it's not personal. Mm-hmm. That is not personal. Very key. Because um, I got my feelings hurt a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, you, you, you still try to do as much as you can. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes you've done all you can, and yeah. sometimes the answer is no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very mm, true. That yeah, that's one. what I would it's say. It's not personal, guys. Man. Well, I think that about wraps mm -hmm. us up on this exclusive segment yeah. of This and a Third. Can we slow clap? Yeah. This hair is now. And we thank y'all for tuning in and turning up for another exclusive episode of This That Third, the lifestyle show that gives you life. Literally. Literally. Once again, it's been a pleasure serving as your host. It's your boy, Calvin D. Roy King the Third, And as always, my lovely co-host with the most is Miss Reese PC, the one and only. And we are the Undisputed King and Queen of Chicago Podcast. Check, Check us, us out. out.